Hey guys, starting this video off in the bathroom as per usual. I'm getting ready for work. I'm very tired today. It's been a long week. I just have not been sleeping the way that I normally do, so I'm tired. But off to work we go. Very casual today. Got my hat on because just couldn't be bothered to deal with these edges. Today's gonna be a good day because I'm claiming it, okay? All right, raise your hand if you're tired of hearing about this election. <laughs> Gosh, it's literally every single day. Hey guys, so <coughs> Clapping for days. <laughs> Jeez. I finished rehearsal. I didn't vlog anything because sometimes I suck at vlogging. Um, but it was really good. We're getting ready for Good Friday and Easter and all that good stuff. Now I'm gonna do some grocery shopping because that's important. Gotta get my food in. You know when you're already out shopping and then you start getting texts and calls of what people want you to get? Why you already in your groove and it's like, why couldn't you tell me to swap that? That's what I'm currently experiencing. <laughs> I'm looking for this pomegranate juice and I feel like it does not exist. There it is. Success. Got my shop by bags. <laughs> now I'm ready to go home. I'm tired. Good morning everybody today's a special day it's saturday so happy saturday and today i'm going to be speaking at a women's meeting at my church which is different and i'm excited a little nervous but i think it should be good i hope that you know god gives me something good to say hope everyone has a wonderful day and let's go to this women's meeting hey guys so we're at the women's meeting and i've got breakfast here it's a, a nice amount of people here so it should be really good and chelsea's here can I show you? Say hi! I'm here. I'm up. <laughs> anyway, it should be a good day. And um, I'll show you a little bit around the room so you can see who's here. Isn't this the cutest camera? It's a Polaroid. I'm obsessed. I'm Chelsea. <laughs> Her sister. This is Nicole. She's getting ready to speak. No, she has her notes. Hopefully I can record some of her talking. So I feel like I know most of you guys here, but for those that don't know me, my name is Nikki. I'm 24 years old, and I've been at this church for 20 of those years. So as long as I can remember, I've been in the church. I don't remember really not coming to church. And when I was asked to give a testimony today, I was a little hesitant because I was like, I don't really know what I'm going to say. There's not a defining moment where I remember saying the sinner's prayer and having my life changed forever. And there was never an option for me to choose to love Jesus. That's just something that was instilled in me from a very early age. But, you know, I prayed about it, and I do believe that God gave me something to share with you guys today. So, like I said, I grew up in the church, you know, I was part of the first original children's choir. I went to, you know, I went to Christian school and I knew all the books of the Bible since the first grade and, you know, yeah, it's like I, I grew up here. And, but sometimes growing up in the church, as you get older, there's a certain stigma and expectation that comes with that. And it, it, it puts a lot of pressure on you to live life completely righteously. You always get quotes like, smart people learn from their own mistakes, but wise people learn from other people's mistakes. So don't do what I did, don't do this, make sure that you steer clear of this road and it'll all be good. And so growing up and having that, it, it starts to become a burden. Throughout high school and college, it was like people look at you as a role model and they're putting you sort of on a pedestal. 
And that burden and that, and that this pressure carried with me through college. And it wasn't until I went to college and got there that I realized that the way that I loved Jesus just wasn't good enough. I was relying on other people's relationship with him for my own because I was used to being covered. I'm covered by my parents' prayers and by my church family. And I know that their relationship with him is strong, so I'm good because I'm here. And I realized that that's just, that wasn't good enough for me. And, you know, it wasn't until I truly decided to surrender my all to God that I just saw all these benefits and my life completely changed. And that was uh, when I was a senior in college. So that's what I'm going to talk about today and how my life has changed in my personal experience with self-confidence, self-awareness, favor, and protection. So when I was a senior in college, I remember like it was yesterday, I was on my knees crying by myself in my dorm room because I was so overwhelmed with the future. I didn't know if I was gonna graduate on time. I didn't know what I was gonna do once I finished graduating. And I just, I felt very alone and very tired of trying to figure out my life by myself. And um, I just decided, I cried and I said, God, I just wanna surrender all to you. I'm tired of trying by myself because I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know you the way that I should know you. And I realized that I didn't have the fear of God in me to live a right life. It was the fear of other people and what other people were gonna think if I, you know, backslid and did something crazy. And that just wasn't good enough anymore. So, once I decided that, I saw a big difference. I did write stuff down so I didn't forget. <laughs> I saw a big difference in my self-worth. So, all throughout college, I noticed that I got a lot of my self-worth and validation by how many guys liked me, or how many guys wanted my number, or how many people thought I was cool, or how many friends I had, or how often I could be at a club or a party. And I noticed that that's where I got my validation. But once I decided to surrender all to Christ, I realized that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made because he made me that way, and not because of what some guy thought. I didn't have to get validation from a man to tell me that I'm beautiful because I know I'm made in his image and that's where I got my beauty from. So I just want to encourage you that if you find your confidence and your validation in other people, it'll never last and it'll never satisfy you. And God has to be where you get your validation from. So I saw a huge just increase in my self-confidence once I decided to surrender everything to God. And then I want to talk about favor. So I graduated from college. I was the closest to God that I'd ever been. I was just on fire. I was like, I'm going to come home. Everything's going to be great. I'm going to get a job right as soon as I graduate. And it's just going to be great. I've been in my Bible. I've been on my knees in prayer. I'm always up there. I'm praising worship going in. Like, it's just going to happen quickly. And that just was not God's plan at all. I came back, and I went through such a dry season of just being quiet and not hearing anything and just hearing rejection after rejection after rejection from job after job after job. And I was just like, ah, I thought I was being faithful. What, what's going on? Why am I not seeing any type of fruitfulness? And I realized that God was testing me. He wanted to see if I could maintain that same gratefulness that I had when I was on my floor crying at senior year. And I wasn't necessarily seeing material blessing, but I was just so thankful to God for who he was in my life in that moment. He was filling my void. And, you know, just the love that I felt with him was good enough even though I didn't have all these things happening. So God wanted to see if I could maintain my gratitude when it no longer looked fruitful in the natural. And, and that was just such a lesson for me because no matter what happens, no matter how much success you achieve, you have to realize where your gratefulness comes from and who got you there in the first place. So to make a long story short, I did get a job and I am working at the number one morning show in America. And God does come through for you. And I always give glory to God for that because I would not get that at all if it wasn't for him and if it wasn't for that season of staying grateful and maintaining in my relationship with God when I had nothing. And the last thing I'll talk about is uh, protection. So uh, my sister over there, oh. she's right there, we decided to go to Paris in November, um, just me and her by ourselves. We've never been to Paris before. We don't speak a word of French. We just wanted to go and be adventurous and spontaneous. And so we decided to leave on November 9th and go to London on November 13th. And I don't know if many of you remember, but November 13th in Paris was one of the deadliest terror attacks since World War II. 
and it was this uh, designated spontaneous attack all throughout central Paris, exactly where we were staying. We decided to leave Paris to go to London at 1 p.m. The attack started at 6 p.m. So we just missed this like over 130 deaths, 350 serious injuries, the whole city shut down. They were declared a state of emergency. Flights were canceled left and right. We had just escaped. God got us out of there. And it just shows me how faithful God is to you and how he always has your back no matter how often we let him down. So I'm not going to stand here and, be, and try to pretend like I have this perfect walk with God. I just want to assure you that my walk is constantly being tested, and I do not have anywhere near a perfect walk with God, but I'm confident because I know that now he's my foundation, and I know that my relationship is something that I work on every day because it's the most important relationship to me. And um, I just want to encourage you all that to have your own relationship with God and not to rely on the elders of this house, even though we have some great elders and we know that we're we're with prophets every day and they their access to God is amazing but make sure that you have your own access to God because once you have that relationship for yourself your life will just completely change and uh, yeah so, uh, <laughs> If you guys have siblings, do, do you and your sibling, when you're driving with the parents, fight over who gets shotgun in the car or not? Yes, and I'm a certain woman of an age. No, a certain woman of a certain, certain woman of an age. <laughs> so every time that we're all together um, and like a parent is driving, Chelsea makes it a point. Shotgun, 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 shotgun. Like, regardless of where we are, we were literally in the store, Forever 21. I was like leaving the dressing room, and she goes, Shotgun. And it's like, Really? Are we still there? I'm childish. I don't care. I don't care. At least she knows. People think that I'm younger than you anyway, so I want to That's another thing. Have I ever addressed that? Every time we meet people that, first of all, they don't think that we're sisters, which I get that we don't really look exactly alike, but. Whenever <laughs> these people are looking at me like I'm crazy, but whenever we, I ask, I'm like, who do you think is the older one, me or her? They always say that she's younger than me, I and have I'm a big like, face, okay? Whatever. You want more makeup than she does. Foundation. It's not a compliment. <laughs> the stuff that makes her look like she got burnt. <laughs> That's a oh, little worse. Contour, boo. She <laughs> said, it makes me look like you got hurt. burnt. <laughs> it's been a good day. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. I'm starving. Gonna eat some food. And yeah, let's cross the street. There's a car. Okay, bye. Valley strikes.